All right. So today we're going to talk about experiments in uh, consumer online products, A-B tests and other similar things. Uh, before we begin, uh, just uh, so that I understand uh, who is in the room. Uh, so that side of the room, excluding those guys, uh, show of hands who has analyzed A-B tests. Okay, who know what A-B test is? Okay, great. So that side of the room, uh, who had a lunch today? No one had lunch today? Okay, so I know that response rate is about 30%, so probably more people in this group actually did analyze A-B test. <laughs> At least I would hope that's the case. So before we begin, um, product madness, what we do? It's a very quick, quick video. Okay, you got the point. We make social casino games. Uh, they're not gambling, uh, so it's virtual money. So you pay real money to buy virtual currency, and then you gamble virtual currency. And if you win uh, 10 million or billion, you're not able to take any money back. It's just virtual currency. It just stays there. People still love that stuff, and they still pay money for that. Um, so uh, the goal of this tutorial, and uh, I really want this to be a tutorial. I would like uh, for some of you who is actually interested in the topic to take away uh, Python notebooks that I prepared and being able to apply uh, some of these learnings. Uh, the main goal of this tutorial is that I think data scientists uh, should not be using those simple uh, A-B testing calculators, not because they're wrong, they're absolutely fine uh, in some cases, but because we're data scientists and we really should be meant to use Python or R or some of those advanced tools. You can still use them, but just don't show anyone that you're actually using them and pretend that you're using Python. <laughs> Uh, so about myself, really quickly, uh, I'm from Ukraine, from Kiev. Uh, I have a degree in a probability series from Kiev University. Uh, I've done a lot of visual effects uh, working in uh, big blockbuster movies. Uh, then I did an MBA. I was a product manager at King, uh, the guys behind the Candy Crush saga. And now I'm heading a data science in the product madness. Um, there are different types of online experiments that uh, companies in uh, our industry are doing. There are classical A-B tests where parts of the group are exposed to one variant of the game and part of the group is exposed to different. Um, we also have some experiments that are just ongoing, for instance, in marketing activities. You want to be able to test uh, the effectiveness of a specific marketing activity uh, and uh, you keep your control group uh, running uh, for a longer time. So there is no actual like, end date for an experiment. Uh, why do we actually need to do experiments and A-B tests in particular? Uh, obviously, the main reason is to learn uh, the market preference uh, and also to actually um, have a hard data to argue with uh, hippos. And hippos is a highest uh, paid person opinion. And sometimes those guys win opinion and if you have hard data, it's actually much easier to, to talk to them. Uh, why do we need actually stats? So, in lots of cases, you can just look at the outcome of your uh, experiment, and I'll be showing some examples later on. Um, you can just see that one group is clearly outperforming the other group. Uh, but in a lot of cases, uh, the question is, is this, uh, do we just observe a randomness here, or is uh, the benefit, or is one group definitely outperforming the other group? So uh, all my examples will be based on this uh, fake game. It's not a real game. It's almost a real game, um, so it's match three, similar to Candy Crush, for instance. Um, and we we're going to talk about the story of this fake game. So uh, imagine that uh, your team or uh, your data scientist embedded in this product team, and uh, the developer team has been working on this game for six or eight months. Finally, it's your launch day. You launch the game, and now the product manager is just uh, looking at the early performance of this game. And um, for some reason, maybe it's vice president of marketing decided that the loading uh, time for uh, initial loading screen should be below three seconds. That's apparently the performance of one of their other well-performing game. And so the first goal, if the game is performing well, is that the splash screen initially should not take than three seconds. Um, some early testing suggested that uh, the game loading is fine, 
but now a uh, product manager is looking at this fake dashboard uh, and for last hour uh, average loading time actually exceeded that magical three seconds. So now he's panicking, he's just running to you as a data scientist and ask you to figure out should he actually even worry about it. Is it statistically significant? It doesn't mean that uh, the servers are not responding. Should we take any actions or should we just continue as normal? And that's where stats comes in. Uh, there are different types of statistical testing. Um, however, there's only a few very generic and widely used statistical testing that any, any uh, respectable data scientist needs to know. Uh, in order to figure out which statistical test to use, first you ask yourself whether uh, you, you try to make an inference based on one sample. So in our case, we have uh, loading time for last hour. And we want to figure out whether it uh, came from a population uh, where the average loading time is less than three seconds or more than three seconds. Or put in a different way, in the long run, do we expect that the average loading time will be below three seconds or above three seconds? So uh, we have one sample. And we, what we want to calculate is to calculate the average uh, or mean. So we're going to use that particular test. Um, I will go in a little bit detail why we're using t-test or, or not a z-test. However, uh, for practical purposes, it doesn't really matter too much. So use t-test. If you have large sample size, it will be, the results will be the same as z-test. So um, how to use it in Python? There is some math formulas that I don't want to bother you with. You can go back to slides later on. They will be published online. Um, overall, all statistical tests uh, and t-test, uh, the way it works is that you throw a data. So these are individual observed loading times for all the people who visited your game in the last hour. Um, the t-test will give you a magical t-value. You put this t-value in a t-distribution, and what you get is a p-value. And uh, p-value is the probability of observing data as extreme as that. In our case, it was 3.5 seconds, whatever, under the hypothesis that a long-running average loading time is below 3 seconds. Um, easy enough to code in Python. Of course, you don't need to code it in Python yourself, uh, because most of those things are already implemented. And the takeaway uh, for you from this slides is, all the pi data is built on top of NumPy arrays, as most of you know. Uh, there is a SciPy stats, it's a core stats library, uh, that implements quite a lot of tests. Uh, and at some point, developers decided to uh, create statsmodel.stats, where they uh, implemented more specific models that uh, they thought are not fit for core library. That's for classical statistics, and then there is a lot of um, uh, excitement uh, currently about Bayesian statistics and uh, Markov chain Monte Carlo models that you can also use for statistical inference. And there are some libraries for that too. So uh, that's how you implement the t test in uh, Python. Uh, you basically just say stats, t test, one sample, because we are dealing with one sample. And this is an array of loading times. So all this data is fake data. So you can make photos of my slides, uh, doesn't matter. Um, and we get, as an output, of p-value of 0 0.086, which basically means that there is 8% chance that the data that we saw uh, could be observed due to randomness. And the long running rate might be below 3 seconds. The same thing can be also, we can use z-test. Uh, the point is, the p-value is very, very close. and. Uh, what it means is that you have large enough sample size for t-distribution to be converging to z-distribution. T-statistics is the same as z-statistics. It just applied to different distribution. Uh, the well, they never kind of really cross. Uh, they will converge when you have a uh, number of samples reaching infinity. However, for practical purposes, well, actually, you can see that here difference is not really that big. Um, so in my fake data, I had 60 installs per hour. The particular case. The number I remember from school is 30. They, they start to get the time too far. Yeah. Okay. Uh, because uh, you're a lazy data scientist and you don't want to calculate this uh, test 
again every hour when uh, your average time is exceeding this magical 3% threshold. It's easy enough to put a confidence interval on top of it and uh, give your product manager a dashboard. Um, and there is some Python code for it that you can review later. And basically, you can create a dashboard that will look like that. And in the long run, um, you can see that, yeah, there was a few spikes where loading time did exceed that magical threshold. However, on average, it's fine. So moving back to day number two, retention. Retention is a percentage of users who return to your, that's not good. Okay, who return to your website uh, on a second day. In this case, we're talking about day one retention. So we had 448 installs on the first day. Again, it's fake data, it's, I made it up. And uh, in my fake data, 123 users came back on the second day. And um, this VP of marketing said that I will give you a media buying budget, so basically a budget to acquire users uh, to do advertising on Facebook and other channels, only if your day one retention uh, will hit at least 30%. And now product manager is actually worrying that uh, retention rate is only 27%. So again, he's coming to you and said, can I actually expect that it will kind of stabilize? What's, what's the chance that in the long run I will actually observe retention rate of at least 30%? It's quite similar to the previous problem. Uh, however, in this case, we're dealing with a proportion proportion of users who decided to return on the next day. And the mass for that test is a little bit different, but not too much different. There is actually a simpler formula that I don't want to bother you with. Uh, all this is available in notebooks for future reference. Uh, easy enough to implement in Python. And there is a z-test in this case in stats models. So that's an example where this particular test uh, the developers decided that it's not fit for core, uh, for core SciPy stats package. And uh, what we're testing is a probability that a long run retention rate will be 30%, considering that everything else will stay the same. The p-value for this fake data is 11%, which means that there is actually a chance that uh, things will improve over time, and we just were unlucky in the first day. And you can put the confidence interval on top of uh, that observation. Uh, and the confidence, 95% confidence interval for that is that we can expect that the long running retention rate will be somewhere between 23%, which is not that great, and 31%. Point, 31%. Um, so product manager decided that actually he needs to work on um, retention. And one way to retain users is to uh, implement, uh, is to make as many users connect with Facebook on their mobile devices as possible. Most games uh, provide a, a connect to Facebook functionality, and our uh, Fruit Crush Epic game should not be an exception. Uh, and what we want to see is where, at which point in the game, we want to implement uh, this magical uh, dialogue that uh, will uh, prompt users to connect to Facebook. Um, the hypothesis is that uh, more users will connect to Facebook after they finish level one. So let's give them level one to play. Uh, let's engage them a little bit. And once they complete this level, then we'll show them a dialogue to connect to Facebook. Maybe they will be more likely to actually share their Facebook credentials with us. And uh, our default uh, user group will see a pop-up dialogue straight after they load the game for the first time. So we want to test which experiment will lead to higher conversion rate. Uh, so in this made-up data, uh, I imagine that we had around 2,500 installs and uh, more than 1,000 people connected here. Uh, and in the second group, the group is actually a little bit smaller because there are some people who did not, even, uh, who did not finish level one, who dropped before finishing level one. However, out of those people who did finish level one, we had uh, half of them, 50%, actually connect to Facebook. So we see that in this fake data, uh, we have more users connecting to Facebook after they completed level one. And now uh, the question is, is this difference statistically significant? Should we actually make a conclusion based <coughs> on that? Or should we keep the test running for longer? Or should we actually make another, another test? Or maybe it doesn't matter at all. So in that case, uh, because we're comparing two different samples, we're using that part of our tree. And we are uh, using a z-test 
for to calculate the difference in two proportions. That's a mess for you if you're curious and easy enough to implement in Python or to use a stats model dot stats. Uh, one kind of maybe not so so pleasant uh, thing about this particular implementation that you actually need to create a NumPy array, two NumPy arrays, uh, so you can uh, apply this test. Oh no, actually it's. Uh, we can also uh, calculate the confidence interval for this particular test uh, and uh, to calculate the uplift that our second flow uh, generated. And when we calculated the confidence interval, it seemed that the second flow uh, is better but by at least 3% or maybe as high as 9%. <coughs> However, uh, the tricky bit about A-B testing and conclusions is that um, you need to be very critical about what you're actually analyzing. So while, uh, while our second flow actually did generate a higher uplift, it seems that uh, it also, uh, we lost more users in the second flow. Uh, this is a fake data, so I just kind of made it up. It might, uh, it's not based on any actually uh, real experiments that, that we've done in this particular flow. The point is that if uh, we do observe a uh, higher retention rate in the first flow, even so we connected less users, maybe actually the first flow is still better. So uh, conceptually, it can be hard to find the one right metric to analyze. The one right metric to actually analyze and conclude your experiments is based on a long, long run, um, long term lifetime value of your users. However, calculating that and putting confidence interval on top of that can be very tricky, tricky in practice. So in practice, we try to find uh, metrics that gives a good proxy, an operational proxy for uh, our A-B tests. And if you can analyze, if you can um, stick to analyzing proportions, uh, that's much easier to conclude in line experiments. So uh, a few words about uh, Bayesian stats. Uh, there is an open source book uh, written in Python notebooks, um, Bayesian Methods for Hackers. And uh, in the second chapter of uh, this book, the example is given. Uh, this MCMC algorithm is used to analyze an A-B test where they're testing proportions. Uh, for this very, very simple case, there is very little point of actually using uh, this hammer. It's an overkill. Uh, and uh, the posterior distribution that uh, MCMC generates is actually, in this super simple case, it's exactly the same as what frequentist methods gives you. Conceptually, they are very different things, but uh, the point is that uh, don't use MCMC to calculate the difference in two binomial distributions. Uh, the first, a revenue-based A-B test. That's where, where things get much more tricky. What we want to analyze in this game and again, the story that I made up for that is uh, the pricing point for extra life in our game, uh, the default one was nine, uh, 199 And uh, VP of marketing is saying that uh, our conversion rate, which means percentage of users who are willing to pay in our free game, is very low compared to competition. So what we should focus on is to improve uh, percentage of people who are willing to spend at least something. And the way to do it, in his point of view, is just to lower prices. So we want to run an A-B test where uh, half of our user base will see a price point of 99 cents and half user base will see a default price point of one, 199. And he's convinced that the lower price point is actually better. So uh, we will show this A-B test for two months. We will uh, analyze the way what we will analyze in this case. We'll measure revenue in the first 30 days for new users only. And uh, then we'll compare the difference. Uh, so let's imagine that that's the data that we received from this fake experiment. Uh, the conversion rate, the percentage of people who are willing to spend money in the first 30 days in a lower, uh, price, a lower price point group was 1.5% and in a high price point group was 1.3%. So it's pretty clear that uh, this group had more users who are willing to pay. However, the average revenue that a paying user is actually paying in a game is much higher in a different group. So this is make, made up data. It is 
kind of loosely based on a type of distribution that you can actually see in uh, online gaming. And um, what makes this problem really tricky is that lots of your users, most of your users don't pay anything. Then most of your paying users pay very little, but there are some users who are willing to pay lots of money. They're called whales, and uh, those few users can skew your distribution. That's why the average per paying user seems so ridiculously high. I made this actually more, uh, even more extreme than it is in reality, and uh, my makeup, they, um, my fake game is a very casual game, uh, so distribution in that game might be a little bit different. But the point is that uh, you, you're dealing with very skewed distributions, and it could be really, really hard to, to analyze those. Um, so the difference in the payments, uh, average payment for a paying user is really high. If we take average revenue of all users, which means take all the revenues in the 30 days, divide by all users who were uh, in our game in the first 30 days, um, the difference is still big, but we don't know whether it's statistically significant or not. We can calculate a uh, p-value uh, for conversion and it's 0 0.037, uh, so it's below the alpha level of 0 0.05, which is this magical number that everyone uses for no good reason, really. However, the practice is to use 5% alpha level as a threshold. And it could be a judgment call. You can just decide that for our business, we are willing to take more risks. Uh, but normally, 5% is used. You wouldn't get fired for concluding an experiment when you say that set your alpha level is 5%, because that's what everyone is using. Whether that's right or not, it's a separate question. So there's definitely more people paying uh, in our low pricing group. And it seems to be that there are more people, uh, that um, people actually spending more in the highest price point. Um, So to analyze the difference in uh, payments, we can try to apply a t-test uh, to calculate uh, the difference between uh, means, between the averages. The formula is relatively simple. And again, this test is present in, in this case in a SciPy stats, a core library. And we get a value of 0 0.09, which at alpha level of 5%, we cannot actually say that it's significant. The difference seems to be pretty big. It's almost a 50 uh, cents difference in uh, average payments. However, a t-test gives us uh, the result that it's not, not significant. And um, another thing about t-test is that it's not clear whether we can actually use t-test or not. There are lots of uh, assumptions uh, that goes into applying a test. Fortunately, we have computers, and we can actually uh, use a brute force, some of brute force methodologies to cal calculate that. So that method is actually pretty bad. And I've seen people using that. Uh, however, uh, I would not use it. So this, this is based on you randomly split all your uh, users into five random chunks. And uh, you say that uh, if uh, the revi average revenue in all five chunks are actually above your baseline, what you're comparing, then the probability of that is happening, uh, assuming that you know nothing about the distributions. Uh, if you have five groups, it's less than 3%. Three, three but it's very easy to abuse this test. And uh, the point is that don't, don't use it. Uh, what you can do is you can just sample from your distribution. So one way to, to simulate uh, your null hypothesis is to combine all your users into one big chunk. Uh, and then, um, so we, we note that uh, the difference between your control and test was 50 cents. It seems like a big difference. So now we're just combining all the users into one big chunk and then shuffling them, splitting them into diff two different groups, and recording what is an observed difference in average revenues. And in this case, I've done that 20,000 times. And then we just calculate what is the percentage of our outcomes resulted in a difference uh, bigger than what we observed. And in that case, it's around 9%. Again, it's actually, actually in this case, it's very close to our p-value that we got from t-test. So in that case, actually, we could have used t-test. However, we still did not get our significance. So um, now uh, VP of marketing is saying, well, we definitely noted that uh, we converted more users, and that's significant. But now you're telling me that revenues are not significant, so maybe actually we should go with a, a lower price point so we have more paying users. Uh, 
there are a few tricks that we can try to apply. And generally, it's pro this problem is really hard. And I actually haven't found one single solution that works in all cases. But one thing that we can, we can do is that we note that uh, we have, in this fake data, 27 players who spent more than $1,000 in the first 30 days. And it's not often heard of number. People, some people do spend crazy money in those online games. Um, so what we're doing is we're saying, let's assume that uh, this price point, this 99 cents versus 199 cents, affects those extreme people as uh, the same extent as it affects those people who spend a lot, but not in, not like in the 3,000 price category. So let's just assume that those players actually spend exactly $1,000. And by doing that, we are effectively making our distribution a little bit less uh, skewed, less extreme. And we can apply a, a simulation and a t-test. And what we get is a p-value of 0 0.36. So now we can actually go back and say, uh, the higher price point definitely generated higher average revenue of user, assuming that the most extreme pairs behaving the same as your mid-range or no, high, high spenders. So there are still users who spend $500 and $600 in the first 30 days. So they're still paying a lot. But now you're making some assumptions. And again, a t-test actually produced the results that are good. So in uh, that fake cohort, I had 30,000 users in each group. Uh, and for those large numbers, actually, t-tests is quite robust. Uh, <coughs> few final, final thoughts. What we didn't answer is, uh, we didn't answer the question of how much, uh, what is the difference, what's an uplift that a high price point generates? Or in our case, what was a downlift that a lower price point generated? You can answer these questions by analyzing distributions. I wouldn't go into details about how to do that. And in fact, the method is not robust enough for me to, to, disc to share it. I'm not actually feeling very comfortable uh, sharing it for the reasons because I still run in lots of different tests to, to conclude that it's actually robust enough. Um, and the second uh, thought is that what we've analyzed is uh, average revenue that a user spent in the first 30 days. However, what we really care about is a long running, um, is, is long term lifetime value of the users. That's uh, normally the metric that uh, you need to care about. And maybe uh, the higher price point g did generate uh, more revenues in the first 30 days. However, maybe we lost more users as a result. Maybe there's uh, a lot of users who decided not to play our game because uh, competitors' game, games are cheaper, and therefore they went and played a cheaper game. And that's something we didn't answer. This is also a much harder problem to solve. And there is no, at least I don't know, of one way to just fix it all. So uh, we do calculate. Uh, we do project uh, long-term lifetime values, and we uh, do calculate the difference. However, putting a significance interval on top of uh, those uh, calculations that are in, in internally based on the stochastic model uh, is actually really tricky. So summary. If you know basic stats, you can actually go quite, you can uh, analyze uh, a lot of uh, A-B tests, and so there's not a lot, in, a lot of statistical tests that you actually need to know. Uh, T-tests are robust enough if you have large data. However, if you don't uh, have a l lots of data, or if you're not sure whether you can apply T-tests, uh, you can easily simulate null hypothesis using sampling, and Python is, and NumPy arrays are, it's easy to implement those techniques. Uh, don't use MCMC for simple things. MCMC and Bayesian statistics is really cool if you know your priors, if you uh, also actually building more complex models. And actually, that problem could be solved with Bayesian methods. But uh, there's also a lot of things that you need to, to know. There's a lot of assumptions going to Bayesian models. And uh, in that case, we didn't want to make those assumptions. Um, and yeah, analyzing actually. Uh, highly skewed distributions is hard, and I actually still experiment with better techniques to, to, to conclude those experiments. Thanks for attention, and questions? Sure.